Dr. BC, I am having trouble understanding this SML merge function. Could you please walk me through it? Of course. But before we walk through the SML code let's look at the underlying algorithm. Suppose I split the class into two lines, and then sorted everyone in each line by their size. Then I asked you to merge the two lines into a single sorted line. How would you do it? I suppose I could stand at the front of the lines, and decide which of the people at the front of the lines was shorter. I could ask that person to join a line behind me. I would keep doing that until both lines are empty. That sounds perfect. Give it a shot. 1. You are first. 2. You are next. Now 3. And 4. And 5. Now 6. One of your lines is now empty. Do you see a quick way to finish? I sure do. Everyone who is left, join the line. Well done. Now let's walk through the code. The function has a few base cases for when one of the lists is empty. It just returns the other list. It then has a case where neither list is empty. SML knows the lists are not empty because each one has a head and a tail. The function compares the heads of each list and chooses the smaller of the two. If x is smaller, it prepends x onto the result of recursively merging the tail of the first list, which is called xs in the pattern, and the full second list, including y and ys for its head and tail. If y is smaller, it prepends y onto the result of recursively merging the full first list, and the tail of the second list. When SML runs this function, it starts from the top trying to find the first pattern that matches the input. When it finds a pattern that matches the input, it runs the corresponding code. Let's try it with some real input so you see what I mean. Let's start with an easy example. Let's merge an empty list with the list 1 3. SML starts at the top looking for the first pattern that matches this input. It finds it right away. The first pattern matches. SML runs the code for the first pattern, returning the contents of the second list. Now let's see what happens if the second list is empty. You, try this one. Okay. The first pattern does not match since the first list is not empty. But the second pattern, does, match. SML runs the code for the second pattern, returning the contents of the first list. Well done. I think we are ready for a more complex example. Let's merge the list 1689 with the list 25. Neither of the first two patterns match since neither list is empty. But the third pattern matches since each list has a head and a tail. It compares the two heads. X is smaller, so it prepends the value of X to the front of a list it will build by recursively calling the merge function with the tail of the first list and all of the second list. In the recursive call, both of the first two patterns still do not match, so we are on the third pattern again. SML identifies the head and the tail of each list. This time Y is smaller, so it prepends the value of Y to the front of a list it will build by recursively calling the merge function with all of the first list and the tail of the second list. Your turn. You try this one. Okay. Both of the first two patterns still do not match, so we are on the third pattern again. SML identifies the head and tail of the first list, and the head and tail of the second list. Wait a second. The second list does not have a tail. Actually it does have a tail, it is just empty. Don't worry. Treat this like any other list. Okay. Y is still smaller. So prepend the value of y to the front of a list built by recursively calling the merge function with all of the first list and the empty tail of the second list. Well done. We are now on the last call since, although the first pattern does not match, the second list is now empty, so the second pattern matches. Just return the remaining contents of the first list. Now all that is left to do is concatenate the list, and we are done. Thank you for your help. This makes a lot more sense now. 